I am going to talk about, a, as Dan pointed out, a very different perspective than I think I've heard throughout the, the, the entire conference, which is how do we start to address testing in the context of uh, automation? So first I want to uh, take a step back and, present and, and share the, some high-level challenges in doing so. And then I want to introduce a methodology that um, looks at testing uh, as a very holistic, from a holistic perspective to address each aspect of the service delivery lifecycle. And, uh, and we call it the lifecycle services assurance methodology. And then I want to just uh, wrap up and, and show how things fit together. So, so first, what is the, what's the challenge from a testing perspective of, um, of virtualized networks and services? Well, first, what we need to do is to address uh, and ensure that the very diverse virtualized network functions can perform as expected on extremely diverse NFE infrastructure and if you think edge, it even, the problem even gets exacerbated because we, do, we know even less about the capacity and capabilities of that NFEI. And also to be orchestrated with a very diverse mano or ma automation and orchestration environment. So it's, a, so it's a fairly complex problem from a system integration standpoint. And as a result, testing and validation is going to become much more important. So as the network evolves, we need to start thinking about some of the problems today in the virtualized environment. I mean, first of all, we have to think that there is, as, as one of the speakers said earlier, I can't recall which, there are no hybrid networks. I mean, we're always dealing with, with the brownfield. There's no greenfield that we're thinking about when we look at these broader, we, these broader challenges of introducing a new automated service delivery mechanism and platform. Uh, we also have to think about the fact that the NFVI is non-deterministic, and it's just particularly true the farther we move away from the carrier cloud. I mean, there's going to be a whole range of different architectures in and implementations for those architectures. But one thing is clear as we usher in this new era of services with 5G in particular, we're going to be seeing applications at the edge. And that edge is, is all relative. That edge is not just an edge. It, it, could be, uh, at, it could be in the central office. It could be uh, a cloud edge. It could be even at the CPE because there's devices that can actually run VNFs on the customer premise. So that means that we have a new set of problems to solve that we never really had to think about before. We never worry that embedded software is not going to run within the environment that it's uh, designed to run in. Because typically, if you think of the hardware world, we're only running at 10, 20 percent utilization. They have a lot of overhead. Now we got to think about a very non-deterministic infrastructure. And then all, all, always we have to think about the expanding set of security vulnerabilities. A number of speakers have talked about a range of technologies that are introducing new vulnerabilities that we're going to have to address. And those, and those vulnerabilities are going to require a new set of uh, methodologies to be able to even test and validate to the fullest extent possible. Uh, and, and this is not to ensure anything. It's just to, to, to try to reduce the probability of security vulnerabilities is the best we're going to be able to do. And in the virtualized environment, it's even, it's even a, a more significant problem. And then finally, we don't necessarily have standards for all the things we're, we're trying to do as well. We had a whole session earlier on, um, on the harmonization of those standards. We know that open source and standards are key, but we don't necessarily have a standard at every aspect of the, uh, of the implementation which is where testing and validation starts to become an issue. So as a result of this, we really need to rethink the testing methodology. That's really the purpose of this talk. We need to start thinking about migrating testing from a hardware-centric perspective into a software perspective. We have to think about the fact that a lot of testing is so-called snapshot testing. We do some testing and move on, whereas in the dynamic cloud-based environment, testing is going to become a more continuous process, just like some of these dynamic services are. 
And of course, we're going to have to think beyond the infrastructure. Right now, a lot of the testing work that's done is, is very focused on physical layer and infrastructure layer testing. And that's going to continue to be important. But what we need to do is to start to adapt these methods as we move up the stack. Because we're now looking at a, at a much, much richer uh, arc, you know, layered architecture. And then finally, we have to move from just testing in the design and QA phase and in the lab to the operational network. And of course, we've been doing that for a long time with assurance. But, but what we're th the, the concept here is to think of this continuum from the lab to the live network. Now, this is just to set some context. You've seen, I would say, numerous versions of the uh, virtualized network architecture. This does not correspond to any specific implementation. This is a functional architecture. We have an infrastructure layer, a virtualization layer, and a, uh, a service layer. And of course, all these terms are somewhat ambiguous, so I do apologize for that. But the idea is to be able to, uh, to be able to think about it from a testing-centric perspective. So in this, in this context, then, you know, the infrastructure layer is sort of NFVI-centric testing. We then need to, to move up the stack into VNF-centric testing or validation. And then, of course, at the higher layer, the service layer, now we're going to have uh, to think more along the lines of network service and the Etsy terminology or, or function, service function chaining and then composite service end-to-end -end testing as well. So, um, so with that, what we want to do is introduce a model that, that addresses the entire service delivery lifecycle. So first, we would talk about testing. So let's talk about the front end, the design phase, the, the, the onboarding of, um, of uh, not just VNFs, but onboarding of all these components orchestrators, VIMs, hardware, infrastructure, everything. And in order to do that, we're gonna need, we have some big, you know, big fundamental questions we need to address for virtualization. You know, what's the capacity of the NFVI? Well, it's going to vary depending on where it is and what it is that we're, we're actually t we, what we're actually thinking about in terms of deploying virtualized resources and virtualized functions. You know, what's the, what's the network capability? But it's also the compute and storage capability as well, because we're looking at software now. Uh, what kind of compliance? Do we need to even think about compliance? I mean, if we're actually looking at standardized services such as carrier ethernet or the new MEF WAN services that Daniel's going to be talking about a little bit later, you know, do, we have to, do, do we have to provide some kind of conformance testing to be able to address this need to be able to, to, to get onto the path of interoperability. It's not where we're going to have it through testing. We just have to work through a number of different ways. And then, of course, we want to benchmark and, uh, and be able to uh, compare and contrast different types of implementations. Because now we're in the multi-vendor environment. We're in the open environment. And, and, and we're not just going to see one vendor's equipment or one vendor's stack. So we have to uh, primarily address this from the um, the standpoint of performance, but we're going to be looking at um, some of the other areas, such as n looking at bottlenecks, making very precise measurements, which are going to be needed for, as an implementer versus as someone who's operating the network. And then, of course, we have to also think about an automation strategy. It, testing is not immune from being automated. And, the, and there's a lot of work and thought that's being given to how we should actually think about testing in the virtual environment. So next, let's talk about validation. Now we're moving up the stack into the virtualization layer. And as you can see, there's a number of different problems that we need to be able to address. First of all, do um, the VIMs and the cloud that, that we intend to use to actually deploy these virtualized network functions, do they provide the, the appropriate performance levels? And we also need to know, we also need to start thinking about some areas that we haven't been thinking about in the testing world, which is configuration. We don't typically have to worry about configuration when we're running in an embedded environment, but in the virtualized environment, we have no idea whether things are configured properly, whether there's been some uh, security breach, 
whether we have to whether we have a manager that actually is is actually managing that VNF or or that that service chain, we have to think about a whole set of different problems that we haven't thought about before. And then, of course, we have to think not only in terms of VNFs, but service function chains and network services as well. And then, of course, we want to uh, start to think about the big challenge, which is we have NFVI and we have these virtualized network functions. We understand the capabilities of each, but can we, can we think about it in a, in a broader sense to ensure that these virtualized network functions and service function chains will run in the target NFVI? It's not just about how much capacity they have, it's about does it provide the behavior that we need it to provide in order to meet our individual requirements. So moving up the stack again, now we're moving from the testing in the front end into the testing in the operational network. And we call that, that in, in general, assurance. I know that term has all sorts of implications, but what we mean by this is that we're moving through the, the life cycle into the operational network. And now we have other problems that we need to be able to address that are different than the initial ones. I mean, First, we, we want to not only look in the design time whether the uh, NFVI performs as expected and whether the VNFs are performing as we expect them to in the, when we're doing the initial design qualification test, but now we want to look at this in the, in, the, in the operational environment. Are we going to be able to continue to validate that the, um, that the NFVI is performing as expected with the target VNFs and target network services that are deployed there? And do we, we also want to look at upgrades, because this is going to be a much, much more dynamic environment. I mean, today's world, in the hardware world, uh, we try to avoid upgrades to a large extent. I mean, there's the, how many boxes, if you think of the box world, how many boxes do we just have? Are we multiple releases of software behind because we're, we're afraid to change anything? Well, in this case, we can't get away with that. So we're going to need to come up with a methodology to be able to qualify and, and validate that those changes, especially when we start stacking them on one on top of one another, are going to still result in the behavior that we expect. So a lot of this is around behavior, and that's why we have to think about not only performance and fault management, but we have to look at the configuration as well. And, and finally, we want to, do, to be able to look at the, the, the top-down view, which is we're now in the um, analysis phase where we're, we're not just trying to look at simple problems, but we're trying to sort of mine the information that we're expecting and also look at the application behavior. Because it's one thing to look at the network infrastructure and even the virtualization environment, but, but as operator after operator shared with us, it's about the user experience, the customer experience, and that's at the application layer. So we have to really think about how we're going to be able to use analytics and, and ultimately intelligence and then be able to run on overlays. And that means we have to do things like be, uh, have mechanisms to be able to look at encrypted data or look at uh, emulation so that uh, security devices don't filter out the tests because a lot of these tests are going to be active. They're not necessarily going to be passive monitoring in the network management context. We're going to be generating some level of traffic and we have to understand how to do that in such a way that it will operate in this more virtualized dynamic environment. And if we look along the way and we look at the overall environment, it's going to be a, it's going to be a more integrated methodology where the test in the front end are going to feed the tests that are actually in the operational network. That's the idea behind the lifecycle services assurance methodology. And what are the benefits? The benefits are the benefits of automation. It's going to be acceleration of new services and time to, to value in, for, in terms of being able to design services and move them quickly through that uh, automated service delivery lifecycle. And then, of course, it's all about agility. It, it always was. I mean, from day one, SDN and NFE were about agility. And then, and finally, we also are looking at... Um, being able to drive down cost and being able to also enable different services that we wouldn't otherwise able to address. So the, the takeaway is that the testing methodology, the, the testing validation and um, 
ultimately the, uh, the analysis is going to have to be mapped into a more automated life cycle that's much more integrated than anything we've done to date. And, um, and with that, I just wanted to take questions. All right, well.